Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be describing how we do item analysis for multiple choice questions. Now to know the validity of multiple choice question, there are two methods. One is pre-validation and other one is called post-validation. Pre-validation means before the MCQ is administered as a test to students, uh, we analyze the MCQ that is called pre-validation and post-validation means after the MCQ is administered to the students, then it is uh, checked for validity or analyzed that is called post-validation. In pre-validation, three or four subjects, uh, subject experts, they sit and they check whether the uh, MCQ is relevant or not with respect to the learning objectives. They also check the appropriateness of uh, language of the MCQ and correct the grammatical errors if any. They check whether the MCQ is properly framed or not, whether the distractors are proper, whether the stem is properly framed or not. So all these things uh, they check during pre-validation. And post-validation it is done after the MCQ is administered as a test and it is uh, one of the methods of post validation is called item analysis. So in this video, I'll be describing item analysis in details. Now MCQs can be of uh, various types. They can be single best response type or multiple response type or uh, correlation type, assertion reasoning type. But for uh, this video, I'll be only describing the single best response type of MCQ. Now, what are the parts of an MCQ? So the question or the first line of the MCQ, it is called STEM. In this example, for example, unilateral foul smelling nasal discharge in a child is most commonly caused by. So this is the STEM of MCQ. Then there are four options. So these are the four options or responses. Generally they are four, but they can be three or they can be five also. But commonly there are four options in each MCQ. Out of these four options, the one which is correct option, it is called answer. And the rest of the three that are incorrect, they are called distractors. So these are the parts and terminologies that are used in multiple choice questions. Now what are the stems of item analysis? How do we start? So whenever MCQs are given as a formative or summative assessment, at the end of the test, the score of the whole test for all the students is uh, calculated. And then the students are ranked in order of the merit based on their test scores. The top one third of the students, they are called high achievers and the bottom one third, they are called low achievers. So when the score is arranged in from, uh, from higher marks to lower marks, then the, and suppose for example, there are hundred students. So the upper 33 uh, students who got maximum marks, they will be top achievers and the lower, lower uh, 33 students who have got less marks, they will be the low achievers. The middle one third we do not take for calculation in item analysis. We only take the high achievers and the low achievers. And then we prepare a table for each item. Now item means MCQ. So MCQ, the other term for that is item. So for each item, we prepare one table. Now this is an example of how we prepare a table. So here we write the item number. In this example, it is say two. And here we write the key. That is what is the correct answer to that uh, MCQ. So here we say it is C. Now we prepare a table like this in which uh, here we can see that there are, it is a four option MCQ A, B, C, D. And here we write the number of the students selecting this option among the high achievers. For example, here uh, it is written five. It means among the top one third, that is top achievers or high achievers, uh, five students, they selected option A. Similarly, five students selected B, 30 students selected C, 
and 10 students selected D. So this is denoted as H, uh, the number of the students selecting the particular option among the high achievers. Similarly, we also calculate the number of the students who select the particular option among the low achievers and it is denoted by L. So here we can see that 14 students among the low achievers, they selected option A. Similarly, 14 among the low achievers selected B, 10 selected C and 12 selected D. So here we see that we have taken uh, 50 uh, high achievers and 50 low achievers. So maybe the class is of 150 students, so middle 50 ones are left. They are not taken for item analysis. And the total number of students who have been uh, who have been used for item analysis in this particular example will be 50 plus 50, 100. So that is denoted by N. So H, L and N. Now these uh, terminologies will be helpful when we do the item analysis subsequently. Now there are three parameters that we calculate during item analysis. One is the difficulty index that is denoted by P. Second one is the discrimination index that is denoted by a D. And the third one is distractor functionality also called distractor effectiveness or sometimes distractor efficiency. So let's see what are these things and how do we calculate. So first is the difficulty index. It is the measure of the difficulty or rather the ease of an item or MCQ. It is also called item difficulty or facility value. Its value ranges from 0 to 100 percent. Higher the value, easier the question. So basically this uh, is a measure of how easy a question is. It is calculated by P is equal to H plus L divided by N into 100. Now in the previous slide we saw that H is the number of correct responses in the high achievers, L is the number of correct responses in the low achievers and N is the total number of students taken for item analysis and this will include the non-responders also. So in, in the example given in this uh, previous slide, we have not taken any non-responders, but if there are any non-responders, they are also included to calculate N, that is the total number of students. Now let's again go back to that table and calculate the difficulty index of that particular item. So this is the same table that we saw previously. Now here we can say, uh, uh, we saw that the correct answer is C. So the H value for this particular item will be 30. It means 30 students among the high achievers uh, gave the response correct or gave the or, uh, or ticked the correct response. Similarly, 10 students among the low achievers, they also uh, ticked the correct response that is C. So H will be 30, L will be 10 for this item and the total number of students 50 plus 50, it will be 100. So when we put in that formula, P is equal to H plus L divided by N into 100, this comes to 40%. So the difficulty index of this particular item, it is 40%. Now what does, what does, what does this mean? Let's see. So based on the difficulty index, the MCQs are divided as if the difficulty index is between 0 and 30, the MCQ is difficult. If the index is between 30 and 70, it is acceptable. If the index is more than 70%, it is a very easy MCQ. Now, ideally, the difficulty index should be somewhere between 50 to 60%. The role of very easy MCQ is that generally they are put at the beginning of the test so that the students, when they start the test, they face easy questions and they get a psychological boost. Now moving on to the next parameter of item analysis that is discrimination index. It measures the ability of an MCQ to discriminate between high and low achievers. Its value ranges from minus 1 to plus 1 and it is denoted as small d and is calculated by the formula H minus L divided by N into 2. Now here H, L and N are the same uh, uh, 
uh, they have the same value that we saw in the uh, pre previous formula while calculating the difficulty index. Now one point to note here is that if we get a negative discrimination index then it indicates that the item is either defective or the answer is uh, the, the key is wrong. So it needs to be looked into. So we, we, we should not never get a negative discrimination index. Now coming back to the same example, let's calculate the discrimination index of this item. Now here we know that H is 30, L is 10 and N is 100. So if we put it into the formula of calculating the discrimination index, it will be H minus L divided by 100 into 2, which will come to 0.4. Now, what is the interpretation of this 0.4? Let's see. So based on the discrimination index, if it is less than 0.2, it is a poor MCQ. Poor means that MCQ is not able to discriminate a good student or a bright student from a weak student. If the discrimination index is between 0.25 to 0.35, it is a good MCQ. And if it is more than 0.35, it is a very good MCQ. So in the present example, we saw that the discrimination index is 0.4. So it, it is a very good MCQ. Now the third parameter, it is the distractor efficiency or the functionality. It is a measure of effectiveness or plausibility of an incorrect response that is distractor means it is an ability of a distractor to attract the responses. Distractor efficiency ranges from 0 to 100% and a distractor is deemed non-functional if less than 5% students select it. Now it means that if any option it attracts less than 5% of the responses then it is called a non-functional distractor. Now let's see again with the same example. So here we can see that option A. So 5 students among the high achievers and 14 students among the low achievers have attended this option out of 100 students. So if we calculate the distractor efficiency for these distractors so for option A, it will be 5 plus 14 that is 19 upon 100 into N that is total number 100 which comes to 19%. Similarly for option B, it is 19 and for option D because C is the correct response. So the rest three are distractors. So for option D, it comes to 22%. So here we see that all the distractors have the efficiency more than 5%. So in this particular example, all the distractors are efficient distractors. Now, if in any other MCQ, we do get the distractor efficiency less than 5%, then we should try to reframe the question or, uh, or we try to insert a new distractor. So we saw that by measuring the difficulty index, discrimination index, and distractor efficiency, we can do the post validation of MCQ, which is called item analysis. Now, this item analysis is very important for creation of the item banks or the MCQ banks. And the teachers should aim at high facility value and low discrimination index because the aim of our teaching is not to distinguish between good and the poor students, but it is to ensure that all students have learned the lesson correctly. And item analysis, another important point about item analysis is that it pinpoints the questions on which good students are confused and also which students have not attempted. So by looking into these factors by item analysis, uh, the teaching is improved as well as learning is improved. So these are the uses of item analysis and moreover, it is a tedious work, but it promotes teamwork in the department and it should uh, all the MCQs uh, should be analyzed after administration for item analysis. Now this prepare I have prepared this uh, presentation using the landmark paper by these authors which was published in Indian Journal of Medical Education in 91 and also one of a very 
useful books in medical education by the name medical education principles and practice and these are the editors of this book so i hope this video will be useful and all of you will try to do item analysis now thank you very much